This is the 2021 Lexus GX 460. It is a full-size luxury SUV, and there are some improvements for 2021, and we're going to take it for a drive. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot more than cool car reviews. We give you first looks of new vehicles and we give you information so you can save money. We give you car smarts because we believe knowledge is power. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. This is the 2021 Lexus GX 460. There are some improvements, a premium luxury trim level, some acoustic glass has been improved, as well as Alexa has been added. We're gonna take it for a drive and cover it in 10 different categories because when you go to the dealer, they're gonna try and sell you on this vehicle. We're gonna give you information so you can make a good choice. We're gonna cover performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating, technology, features, design, quality, cargo space, which is really important on a vehicle of this size. We'll talk about value in the end. We'll give you a car coach reports total so you can compare it to its competitors. There'll be a link down below in the description of all the competitors and links to those reviews. So you can find all your information in one location. Let's take it for a drive. Under the hood is a 4.6 liter V8 engine with 301 horsepower and 329 pound-feet of torque. This 4.6 liter V8 engine has 301 horsepower and it actually has really nice performance because it's a V8. But what you're giving up, unfortunately, is fuel economy and we're getting about an average of 16 miles to the gallon, which is the combined fuel economy that Lexus is telling us is normal for this vehicle. It has a 6,500 pound towing capacity, which is really good for this segment. Now, one thing you need to know is that off-road, this vehicle has some really good grunt. And I have not taken it off-road this time, but in the past, I have taken this vehicle off-road and there have been no improvements from that in 2020. So we're looking at something we know has off-road capability, but how many people are taking a Lexus off-road? Not so many, whether it be new or used, because this vehicle is about luxury and Lexus has always done a great job with that. When you're looking at performance from a standing stop, we'll show you what she does. From a standing stop, nice V8 performance. Goes right into that yellow area of the RPMs. When you're looking at performance for this vehicle, it has plenty of get up and go. You have no problem passing. And that's really good when you're on the highway or getting in an on and off ramp. When you're looking for this vehicle at from a performance perspective, it earns an eight. 18 inch wheels are standard on this vehicle, but it does have the Lexus kinetic suspension system. So what that is, is like a magnetic suspension. It adjusts based on the conditions, whether it be rough road, how it absorbs, and all that is important so you have a comfortable ride. This is a traditional body on frame SUV. It has good off-road capability. It is not a mountain goat, but I'll tell you, if you need to go to a campsite or you're going someplace on a farm, you won't be in trouble whatsoever. The low speed handling maneuvers are good. The steering wheel is tight and at high speeds, it seems to have good grip for the road. When it comes to brakes, pretty good brakes for this category and fits right in the middle with all the other luxury midsize SUVs. The GX460 has full-time all-wheel drive and that will help you give good control in the winter so you won't worry about getting stuck. Again, if you're in deep snow, you're probably going to want to get winter tires, which I use on all my SUVs. Again, this is something everyone's got their own need based on where you live and where you're going and what you're doing. But if you want the best handling and braking, winter tires are the way to go. And I have reviewed winter tires before. You can check that out up here. Now, one of the things I want to tell you when you're looking at your competitors as far as handling, you want to get the feel for this big vehicle. There are other big vehicles on the road that compete with this, like the Nautilus or the MDX. When you're driving the competitors like the Acura MDX, you want to make sure that this vehicle feels comfortable to you because when you're buying a luxury SUV that's midsize, you want to make sure you feel like you have control. When you're looking at handling for this vehicle compared to other vehicles in this category, it deserves an eight. Lexus is known for safety, and when you're talking about some of the things that are standard, including lane departure warning, active cruise control, these are features that you want. You never want to skimp on safety, so make sure when you're buying your trim level that all the safety features, including rear cross traffic alert, which you will need in a vehicle of this size, are on that trim level. Again, something you never want to skimp when it comes to safety, and Lexus is known for having 
top quality safety vehicles. So I'm not worried about it from that perspective, but there's a lot of other safety features that aren't on this vehicle that are on some others, such as a head up display. Is that needed? No, that's a personal choice. Again, you buy what you need, not necessarily what you want. But when you're looking at this vehicle from a safety perspective, as I come to a stop, it earns an eight. Visibility is an important part of safety. 80% of your driving decisions are based on visibility and obviously you need to see where you're going. So out the front, you have a good size windshield. It's a little short, but this is a quite a large vehicle and the seats are adjustable, which we'll talk about seating in a moment to raise you up high enough based on your size. When you're looking at the sill height, it's a reasonable height for not just resting your arm, but also for those passengers who are able to see out the window. Looking out the back, you have a very large rear view mirror here. But what you do have, as you can see back there, you've got the second and third row headrest, so it does block your visibility. There is a backup camera, it's standard, and a round view camera is standard on the luxury, but you can buy it as an option on the midsize, so it's good to know that that's available. When you're looking at visibility overall, if you put that third row headrest down, if no one's sitting back there, I would say the visibility is really impressive considering the size of this vehicle, and it deserves a nine. When you're looking at seating for this vehicle, there are three rows in it, seat seven. One of the things you want to keep in mind, does this seat fit your body? We're all built differently. Uh, personally, I found that the bottom cushions of all three rows were kind of on the flat side and could use some more bolstering. Again, we're all built differently, but then offer adjustability so we can all have something that meets our needs. The side bolsters, which are right here, hold you in, but not as well as they could compared to the competition. Now, one thing to note in the front seat is this, adjustable height seat belts. That should be standard on all luxury midsize SUVs. And if you get into a vehicle that doesn't have it, you want to make sure that that seatbelt doesn't cut you across the neck, whether you're buying it as a new vehicle or a used vehicle down the road. Both front seats have lumbar, two-way adjustable lumbar. That's just in and out. Nothing bigger than that, but that's all it has. Looking at some of the competitors, especially the Germans and the Lincoln and the Cadillac, there's more adjustability. Let's take a look at the second and third row and we'll give you a rating. Here in the second row, we have that same issue you have with the front, flat seating, no support. You can put two child safety seats on each side, nothing in the middle. Of course, you can pull this center armrest down. You have a very nice, very luxurious cushioned center console. Press the button and opens two cup holders. I'm not a big fan of how this folds and how it opens because like the Germans, it just, it'll break over time. And it's something you need to think about, especially if you've got kids, you know, regularly riding in the vehicle. Behind the driver and passenger seat, you have elastic pockets, really nice for storing whatever it is you might want to put there. And then you've got your climate controls directly behind the center console. You've got heated seats at a high and low rating, and you have adjustability for your three zone climate control. Further down, you have two 2.1 USB charging ports, and that is important. You've got vents here, so you can open them and close them based on who would like that. You've got this round speaker on the door for your Mark Levinson audio, which is an option, and wood detail, very nicely designed, very clean, very modern, and this bright white interior is also clean and modern. Heading back into the third row, you gotta pull the seat back. It's a good thing it's adjustable because if it wasn't, your knees would be way too tight. I feel like a little kid back here. Of course, you can put a, another person here, but these seats are just too, sort of like a jump seat. And back, you've also got an additional cup holder and there's buttons on this side so that you can put the seats forward. You can also fold the third row while you're sitting in it, which concerns me for the person sitting here on the passenger side with children. I just see my kids doing stupid things. Something to consider. There are buttons here on the passenger side in the rear, just behind the second row seating for folding the third row. I know it's for when there's no one back here, but I just know that children will be doing stupid things and you can fill in the blank on that. When you're looking at technology, you're starting off with this eight inch screen. This is the Lexus N form communication system. It's a mix of capability and a bit infuriating. First off, it is outdated navigation system. However, the quality audio system, especially this upgraded Mark Levinson audio is top of the line and the audio system's great. When you're looking for something at this price point, you expect to have standard Apple CarPlay, preferably wireless, Android Auto, but it does have Amazon Alexa, but does not have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And the voice technology is a bit on the clunky side. When you're looking at technology for this vehicle, there's not a lot of it as you would expect in a car of this category. And for technology, this vehicle earns a six. 
when you're looking at features, there's actually quite a bit that is standard. And as you work up to the higher trim levels, you'll see some really nice features. First off, everything is easy to use. You got your audio systems, your different modes, your speaking to text, and this uh, controller controls what's going on in front of you. Pretty simple. Also, you've got your safety on the right side of the steering wheel, as well as your standard stocks for wipers, for lights, and then way down here on the right is your cruise control. And this is for your safety features here for the lane departure warning and the distance control between you and the vehicle in front of you. Now going back to this center screen, you press the button on the right and you can pick what you're looking for. Use that little controller to say, I want fuel economy, or I'm looking for other information. It's all right there, very easy to use. And at the top, you can see there are different controls and that control is to the right. You can get the steering angle, which is really good for off-road purposes. You've got all of the controls you can turn on and off. Your messaging, that's your safety features. That's lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, and a bunch of others which we covered in safety. Now, additionally, as you go through your information, this button here to the right of the steering wheel, you can pick the information that you need, and each system then has uh, the controller here on the right to choose. On the left side, you've got your mirror control, which is a nice place to put it rather than on the door. You've got the brightness control, of course your odometer, and this is your heated steering wheel right there, which you do need in these cold temperatures. This is your fuel door, which not every vehicle has. Some of it have included into the locking mechanism of your door. So as you go further up, you can see some of these pretty standard controls that have been here for a long time. Moving to the center stack, you've got your vents, your screen, which includes audio, navigation, your climate control is here. You press the climate control button to get your climate control here, except for your heated seats. And then you've got your home button, which brings you to this, which is your directional for your navigational compass, your fuel economy, the audio station you're listening to. You can hook up your phone. Again, that's going to be a manual application. Your info apps, which is through your iTunes, which includes the Lexus app of suites, which is actually really a nice setup through the Entune system. Your fuel consumption, your traffic incidents, and your instant weather. All those setups, and of course, a lock if you're looking to do different things. Heading back to that home button, you can see that you can do a split screen and you can set that up however you want, totally customizable, which I think is very nice. I just wish the processor was faster and the graphics were more of this century. I think the graphics look good, but I wish that the processor and the graphics style was more current, like the competition. You've got your auto button for your three zone climate control, and your defrosters and so forth. Very easy to use. And of course your temperature buttons are right here. Further down, you've got your volume and your controls for your audio, which it's nice to have that separately. There's this really nice cover here of this beautiful real wood. And that is an upgrade and part of the luxury trim. And to the left of that is your heated and air cooled seat. So that's heated. And then turn that button to the right for the air cooled. When you push this forward, you have storage. It is not wireless charging, although you do have two USB connections and a 12 volt battery. That's the passenger heating and cooled seat. Further back, you've got your park reverse drive neutral low. And on the right side, these are blanks plates for potential other options. Depending on what you order, that's your hill descent and your ability to go to high or low four for your four wheel drive setup. You've got two cup holders and then underneath this lever, if you squeeze it forward, you can adjust the armrest. Again, that's something that you may or may not want. And the same thing is true on the passenger side. Now to lift this up, there is a lever further down and you've got this huge well with a tray and inside there is no additional charging ports. There is a sunroof that is here. It has a manual cover, which again surprises me because the fact that the competitors do have it, but there's no additional sunroof as, or moonroof as you move further back. I'm surprised there's not a panoramic roof option at the least. And of course you've got your overhead console, which has the ability to open the roof and your door lighting and your SOS. Overall, when you're looking at features for this vehicle, compared to the competitors in this class, this vehicle earns an eight. When you're looking at the design of the new Lexus, this is the new front grille. And it does look cool, and I love the gray with the blue. Although every color, of course, can be a different combination. This is one huge grille and a huge Lexus logo. Underneath here, you've got this matte gray, and that's really great for keeping the dirt at a minimum as far as visually 
but the color is really pretty. Also note the three LED light design is also new for 2021. In addition, our trim level has the LED driving lights. They're also very cool. And if you look at this vehicle, that's the biggest upgrade to the front. Our test vehicle had the 18 inch alloy wheels. One thing I would note though, is you could go with a bigger wheel and fill up this wheelhouse. You want that look to look complete. And when you look at the competitors, you'll see that, that tire and wheel combination tend to fill up the wheelhouse better or either that or the fenders further down, but it just gives it a different kind of look and more continuity. When you look back here at the mirrors, you've got the turn signal built in and you've got this huge boxy large three row SUV, which is great for hauling people and for cargo, which is why this really tall roof has a lot of advantages. One thing I do want to note, and you want to check this out yourself, is this running board is a bit short. Either it should tuck up like you see in some of the other competitors. It's sometimes a little more difficult to get in when you can't get your foot on there. I have a small foot. But still, if you need it to get yourself in, if you've got a disability or you're pregnant or whatever your issue is, it may be more difficult to get in. You want to try that as well. There's four doors here. And as you go further down, you can see they've got a lot of black detail with some chrome. Makes it very luxurious looking. When you work your way around the back, this is where some people either love or hate the GX460. Again, everyone has their own opinions on this. When you're looking at the taillight LED, looks really cool, upgraded, and that's appreciated. As well as this nice ledge here that's low so you can lift things up and into the trunk area. Also, you'll note that you can get a class three towing hitch that would be added by the dealer. The chrome details are really nice. GX460 to remind you what you're driving, but nowhere else does it say other than the Lexus logo what you're driving, and that's nice keeps it nice and clean. One of the nice design details that Lexus has taken is they've tucked up your rear wiper blade underneath this lip. That is a genius idea for protecting the blade and also keeping that glass clear, which does improve on the visibility. Now, this is where I have an issue with this car and some people might as well. When you need to open the back deck lid, this is where I have the issue. You press the button, you move out of the way, and this gigantic door is in the way. This big door may be no big deal depending upon where you're parking. So if you're parking in a lot, such as a grocery store, you may not be able to swing it open this wide. Maybe you're at a curb. So some people have some issues depending upon where you live, where you go, and what you do with this vehicle. Again, this is a personal opinion and you need to decide based on that, but a lot of people love it. So it's something you have to consider. And that opens up to this big area in the back and this really nice step up, which I think is great if you got to put dogs in the back or gear in the back, that's well thought out. When you're looking at the total design of the GX460, I'm kind of waiting for a redesign. Although they did some upgrades to make this vehicle look more modern, it's still outdated compared to its competitors. And for design, I had to give it a seven. When you're looking at the quality of the Lexus, it is top of the line. Both the materials and the paint quality, the gaps, just the build value of this vehicle is awesome because when you're looking at the resale, these things are very hot. People do like them. Where I think there are some downfalls is the Entune system and some of the slow processors that are involved and some of the things that you would use every day. Although I'd like to see some improvements overall for quality, it earned an eight. This is heavy, putting down the cargo thing. <laughs> Getting out the third row cargo cover is not that easy. With the third row up, you have 11.6 feet of storage. On the mid-level and the top-level vehicles, you've got power third seat. You press the buttons, and it takes a few seconds, but they do go down and the headrests fold down as well. There's a lot of beeping, but you now have 46.7 cubic feet of storage with the third row folded down. That's much improved. Fold down the second row and you're at 64.7 cubic feet of storage, which is quite a bit. However, in this luxury midsize class, when you look at the competitors like the Acura MDX, the BMW X5, the Audi, the Land Rover, and all the other ones that are out there, and the whole list is down below with links to the reviews, you'll see that this doesn't fare as well, but it just depends how much storage you actually need. Now here's a bad design. I have this cargo cover. I need the third row, but I can't get this in here, so I have to put this in my garage. When you're looking at the value of this vehicle compared to other cars in this category, there is a lot of luxury in this vehicle, although it is outdated in some factors, and the price point is around $53,000 to about $64,900. Our test vehicle, $59,310. We have a lot of nice options on this vehicle. You need to know before you compare it to the competition is what do you need and what do you want and what are you expecting? When you're looking for value in this vehicle, it earns a seven.
When you're looking at all 10 categories for the GX460, this is a luxury midsize SUV and it's a very competitive market. There's a lot of vehicles from every luxury brand. And don't forget Cadillac and Lincoln, they compete in this class as well. When you're looking at a total score for all 10 categories, this Lexus GX460 earns a 75. Now, I may not have covered every single feature that you wanted me to detail. And if you have additional questions, put that in the comment down below. And if you like this video, make sure to like and share it. And if you're looking for even more details on this, we have other contributors to our site, Car Coach Reports. It's in English and Spanish. Some new contributors, make sure to check that out at carcoachreports.com. And if you're looking for even more information, what's new, what's coming out, when is the new Lexus GX460 coming out? Is it worth waiting for the redesign? design or are you willing to give up some of those new redesigns because this vehicle meets your needs you can check that out on all forms of social media at lauren fix and remember you need to get more car smart so you can make good decisions no buyer's remorse check out my book lauren fix's guide to loving your car we appreciate you watching and we'll talk to you next time